new to Affinity Photo? If so, here's everything you need to know, including lots of time-saving tips and tricks. This is your chance to go from zero to hero. All kinds of different ways to start things off in Affinity Photo. You can open an existing image if you like. I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to go with QFHD, better known as 4K. And so you can see the pixel dimensions right here. I'm going to take the resolution up to 300 pixels per inch and click create. And we end up with this blank canvas right here. Now to populate things, I'll go to the file menu and choose place and I will grab an image. Any old image will do. And now what I just love this feature, you can right click and hold to check out the image, to preview it on the fly. You can even move the mouse around while you have that right mouse button down. And this image, by the way, comes to us from the Dreamstime Image Library, link in the description. For those of you who want to totally get away from Adobe Stock, for example. And then if I release the right mouse button, and I have a loaded cursor, meaning it's ready to place. And so notice as I move my cursor around, I may see a right horizontal line, a red one that is, and a green vertical line. That shows me that I have a horizontal snap as well as a vertical snap, and then I'll click to center that image like so. And now I'll zoom out a little bit. Now I wanna call attention to this option here inside the layers panel. So layers panel is where you're gonna be collecting all of your images. This is telling me that the thing I just placed, and this happens when anytime you place an image or drag and drop, you're gonna end up with an image layer which protects the pixels, by the way. So you don't have direct access to the pixels, but they are protected, meaning that I can sit here and scale this image as much as I want. And then I can go off and do 15 other things for half an hour and come back to this image and all the pixels are still there. So nothing is damaged at all. I'm going to press control plus, by the way, to zoom in. That's command plus on a Mac. It's minus to zoom out. So standard stuff. And notice up here, there's this thing called the context toolbar and it is sensitive it's context sensitive so whatever's happening it's going to give you different options when you're working with an image layer you can see the effect of resolution so if it's anything above 300 pixels per inch in my case and it's a little bit reduced in size and you can see 98 percent i'm going to change that to 70 percent and by default you can see if I hit the tab key that I am going to apply a proportional scale. One would think that's what you want. And now let's say I want to take this guy, move it down here with the move tool, which is your kind of default tool in the program, this black arrow right here. And then I'll press shift up arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six times. And then I'll do the same thing with the right arrow, shift right arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six times. And that way I'm just nudging it into a desired location. The Shift key allows me to nudge in 10 pixel increments, by the way. Let's say you want a stroke, an outline around your placed image. Then you can just stroke it by going up here to the stroke item and selecting black, for example. So nothing fancy. It's a very straightforward program in a lot of ways. Not every way, but still. And now I'll go ahead and click on this guy and I'll take the line weight much higher than 0.2 points. That's very skinny, I would think. I'll take it up to three points like so. Now, I want you to notice this is kind of uh, uh, oopsie on the part of the program, but I want you to see what's going on here. Notice you can look very closely and see that we have a rounded corner. That's not the problem. That stuff happens. But what I want to do is zoom in on it. So the best way to zoom is to press and hold the Z key. Get you the zoom tool on the fly. And that way you can drag to the right to zoom in or to the left to zoom out. That's fine. But let's say I want to zoom in on a specific area. I want to marquee an area. Then you press the Z key along with Alt or Option on the Mac, which normally gets you a zoom out. However, if you drag, this is odd, I think. You drag with the zoom out cursor. Now it's turned into a zoom in cursor. And then you zoom in. So... That's a Z-Alt 
keyboard shortcut Z option on the Mac. Don't you love it? Isn't it good to know really useful keyboard shortcuts? I think it is, which is why I invite you to subscribe at this point in time. If not earlier or later, the time is up to you. In any event, I want you to see that we have a round corner right here. So I'm going to click on this bar and that's just a function of this guy. We want it to be a miter join so that we have a nice clean uh, corner right there. The thing that's not clean about it, and I'm just going to acknowledge this. If you find out something different, please comment. Let me know. But notice that we have a little bit of a blur going on, some anti-aliasing as it's known. That shouldn't be happening. Notice if I select this thing, both these options up here, force pixel alignment and move by whole pixels are both turned on and yet we are not getting any kind of pixel alignment that drives me nuts actually that is not cool that is not something we should be seeing inside this program hopefully we will be seeing it get fixed at some point in time now what i'd like to do is add a drop shadow and all kinds of different ways to get to different effects. I just want you to see that these icons down here, when you're looking at the layers panel, afford you access to different things. You got, you got a mask option right here. You have adjustments. We'll see that in a moment. And you have layer effects. I'm going to click on FX and that'll bring up this guy right here. If you want to drop shadow, it's called an outer shadow in this program and notice by the way i'll click on it to make it active notice i'll crank up the opacity value we're not seeing any kind of shadow at this point which i, I think it, it i think this is a little bit of a flaw it'd be nice to kind of see some shadow forming don't you think but in any event we do have the soft set tool which is really cool grab it go ahead and click on it and then you can just drag the shadow around so you can see it now i do have it set to 100 percent, so it's very dark but what i'm going to do is adjust some values here i'm going to change the radius value which is the blur the amount of blur to 80 so we have a nice blurry edge going and i'll change the offset to 50 and then if you drag this thing around notice how it snaps into alignment with the nearest 15 degrees so it's constrained unless you press and hold the shift key in which case you can just drag it around and you can also click by the way and enter your own values such as 325 degrees and then i'm going to take the opacity value down to 50 pixels or 50 percent pardon me like so and i'll click close in order to apply that drop shadow. Hey, real quick, want to learn more about creating photo accurate selections in Affinity Photo using a combination of Affinity's most powerful features? Then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash steak now. So pretty darn easy. Now let's say I want to adjust the brightness and contrast. Things look pretty good, but I just want to give it a little extra oomph. And so I'll drop down to this guy which is adjustments, color adjustments, that is to say. And I'll choose brightness and contrast. And then I'll just go ahead and crank up the contrast value. You can also use the arrow keys, by the way. You can nudge a value like so. Or if you want to nudge it in 10% increments, press shift along with an arrow key. Anyway, 10% and 40%. So a lot more contrast, a little more brightness is going to work out beautifully. I'll just close this guy. You don't have to click OK or anything like that. Notice that I have applied the change. And I can turn it off if I want to do a before and after. Just click on this little toggle right here. It toggles the visibility. So this is before and this is after, without and with. In other words, if you want to clip an adjustment to a specific layer so it doesn't affect the rest of the composition, then drag it and drop it onto the layer thumbnail. I love how this works. I think it's a great design. I'll twirl that open and you can see that brightness contrast is now part of this layer. And you can rename layers. Of course, I could call this Zion because that's what it is. And I, I could call this something like B slash C. You know, something short if you want to. You don't have to rename things like that, but it's just an option if you want. All right, now I'll add another image and I will drop out its background by going up to the file menu and choosing place once again. And I'll select this image once again from Dreams Time. And if you want to see what it looks like, just right click and hold you can see we've got a bunch of different hot air balloons going and so I'll just release and then I'll click 
in order to actually place the image. Now, I don't want it to be this big. So up here in the context toolbar, I'll click on this scaling option and I'll change either one of these scaling values to 54%. Doesn't matter which because they are linked into alignment. So we're constraining the proportions in other words. And now I'll just go ahead and drag this guy, let's say right about here. Now what I wanna do, as I'm saying, I wanna drop out the background. Now selections are not Affinity Photo's best suit as things stand right now, they're getting better and I hope to see them improve over time. But really the best tool for this purpose is the flood select tool. And when I tell you it's equivalent to the magic wand in another program, that might make you go, huh, yeah, well, if that's the best tool they got, that's kind of a problem. But anyway, tolerance 7%, that's how much of the luminance level we're going to be selecting at a time. You can leave that alone. And I've gone ahead and turned on both of these check boxes here. So I can click in the sky. It's easier to select the sky after all than the balloons. And then to add to the selection, you press the control key and click. That's the command key on the Mac. And I'll just keep clicking like so, control clicking that is, until I've selected all the sky. I've almost got the whole darn thing. I'm missing some over here. Is that it? Yeah, that looks pretty good. And so now that I've selected the sky, what I really wanna do is select the balloons after all. I need to invert the selection and you can do that by going up to the standard toolbar, this guy right here and clicking on invert selection. And that goes ahead and selects the balloons. It's hard to tell, but it selected the balloons, not the sky any longer. So it reversed things, but it also selected the area outside the layer. And so to fix that, because it is a good idea to get rid of that right up front, I'll go to the rectangular marquee tool and notice these modes right here. I have the option of setting this to intersect. And that way, as I drag from corner to corner, from near this top left corner, as I drag, I want you to see that I'm previewing the intersection so those balloons are lighting up with marching ant selection outlines. That's totally great, I love that feature. That way it's less ambiguous as to what's going on. And now I'm gonna click on Refine. Now Refine is, in my opinion, the best selection feature in the software. It does an excellent job of refining your selection, of making it that much better. Now, there's two options you wanna know about. One is border width. So I'm, I'm really urging you to kind of ignore the other options. Border width is good. And so notice as I change it, I'm previewing that border. This is the area that Affinity Photo is going to evaluate in order to make a better selection. So is anything in that lit up border, that highlight zone is gonna be reevaluated. I'm gonna go 12% and then I end up with smoother edges. Now I wanna change the preview from overlay, which is gonna give us a so-called ruby lith overlay. So we're seeing the masked area in red. I'm gonna change it to transparent so we can see how that area drops out. So the, the balloons, as you can see, are interacting beautifully with Zion in the background, at which point I'll change output to mask. So that's it. All this other stuff you can safely ignore and then click apply in order to create that mask as we're seeing right here. Do you see it? I'll go ahead and twirl it open so you can see it right at this point. And I want you to exert a little bit of caution. Notice what happens if I switch back to the move tool. This tool is so useful. I want you to know its shortcut, which is V. So it looks like an upside down arrow, if you will. And then the key does, that is the V key. And then if I drag, oops, I drag the mask and not the image. If that happens to you, just undo and go ahead and click on the balloons there. And you can even rename them balloons. So that might make a little more sense. And that way, if you drag, you're gonna move both the balloons and the mask together. All right, now let's say you wanna add some text, then go ahead and select the text tool. It's the artistic text tool. That way you can just create a line of text. And I'm going to enter flying high. I know it's so cliche, but still it fits the composition, don't you think? It sure looks like heck, so press the escape key so the text is no longer active and then I'll go up here to the font option click on it it's set to Arial of course it is but you can enter in something else like script and that way I could select sneaker script 
We're just going to look great. And now I will change the type size to 112 points. Just happens to work well. Now, at this point, I'll press the V key to switch back to the black arrow tool. So that is the move tool, if you prefer. It looks like a black arrow. And I'll drag the text around to where I want it to be. But I want it to be outline text. I want it to be filled with white. Now I can change the fill right here by clicking on this guy, switching over to swatches and I'll select the white swatch. So it's now white text, but I want it to have a black outline. You don't have to resort to a layer effect, by the way. You could click layer effect and go with outline up here, but don't. There's a better way to work. And that is to switch to a vector-based drawing tool like the rectangle tool right there. And then you'll see a stroke option. And that way you can click on it. It's just as applicable to text as it is to text that's been converted to path outline. So don't do that because this way you want it to remain editable, right? And then I'm going to click here and change the line weight to four points. Now, I want you to see what's going on here. I want to zoom in and a great way to zoom in here inside Affinity Photo on any given layer is to double click its thumbnail and that will zoom in on it. And now you can see that the stroke is encroaching on the text. It's going in and out. Now you could click up here and change this guy, the alignment option to stroke outside if you want to. But my preferred way of doing it is to change the order of the fill in the stroke. So send the stroke to back like that. Is that not elegant? Oh my goodness, it's so easy as well. And now I'll just go ahead and zoom out. I want to show you something else. I'll press the V key to switch back to that move tool and I'll drag this up here. Now this is an undocumented feature that I want you to know about. Right now we don't have that many layers, so I could just switch between them by clicking on them, of course. But let's say you want to switch between layers here inside the canvas, then you press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and click, and that will take you to the next layer down, and click again, and that will take you down further still to the Zion layer. See that? And Alt click a third time, it takes me back to the Flying High layer. So Alt or Option click will cycle you between layers when you're working with that move tool. All right, I'm gonna move this guy back down here. And you might say, hey Deke, what about if I want the background to be a different color? How do I accomplish that? Well, there is no background function per se, but very easy. You go up to the layer menu and choose new fill layer right there. And then I will click on this watch. Notice the fill layer is in front right now. Don't worry about that. I'll click on this watch up here in the context toolbar, switch to color. And I want you to notice that I am working here with the HSL slider. So not HSB, but rather HSL. So hue is going to work the same. 210 degrees is going to get you blue, but you're not going to notice because it is a very light blue at this point. So lightness works different than brightness. A little bit confusing, but 100% gets you white, 0% gets you black, and then in between will get you gray when a saturation is set to nothing, set to zero. But if I crank up that saturation value, now I get some color. So just know that this is a slightly different model, but it's a very easy way to work. Okay, now I'll just go ahead and rename this layer, what the heck, and I'll drag it to the very bottom of the stack. Drag it all the way down, by the way. Don't drag it into a layer like so drag it to the very bottom. And I'm noticing at this point that I have a hole in my balloon. Do you see what I'm talking about? I'll press and hold the Z key to get the zoom tool and I'll drag in. Do you see right there? That's a problem. And so what I'm gonna do is click on the mask associated with a balloons layer. And then I'll grab my brush tool from the far left side of the screen from the toolbox. And I want the hardness to be 100%. And I also want to make sure that the foreground color is white down here at the bottom of the toolbox. So I'll tap the D key, D as in default. And now notice that I can paint in that little spot in the balloon and everything looks like it should. Now I wanna show you one more thing. One, if you're looking at your composition and you have bounding boxes all over the place and you're like, gosh, I just want to see a clean version of my composition, then all you have to do is switch to this guy up here at the top of the toolbox. It's called the view tool, but it looks like a hand and it has a keyboard shortcut of H. 
So what do you think? Suggestions, questions, comment below. And then subscribe and turn on notifications so you know what more I have to add in the future. For a look at making advanced selections in Affinity Photo, join me at patreon.com slash deke now, and then go to deke.com and sign up for my free and very pretty newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan, this is Deke Now.